I'm extremely happy to be back in Bulgaria, so thanks for inviting me. Um, I didn't really, like, I think this is only my first or second talk I accepted in person since 2019, so um, when I heard Bulgaria, I said, I'm coming for sure, it's no question. <laughs> Definitely I'm coming, Bulgaria, for sure. Well, we're neighbors, and Greece is so close. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I started coding in Java in 1997. At the time, there was, um, we had this strange tool called JBuilder. And it sort of worked, sort of worked OK, but you know, it was a bit weird. And then I, I went to Germany in 2002, and I was there for about a couple of months. And, and they used Eclipse. So I was blown away by Eclipse because you could simply save it, and boom, it was compiled. And um, in comparison to um, JBuild, it was an absolute you know, eye-opener. And then um, I went back to South Africa, and I used Eclipse for about a year, but people kept on mentioning idea, 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 IntelliJ idea. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'm, I'm happy with Eclipse. It's great. It works well. And, um, but then I needed to work with some really terrible, messy Java code. There was very badly written, not role factored at all, a lot of duplicate code, lots of code that wasn't actually used. Um, you know the type of project written by one guy. If it's written by one person, it's normally going to be quite messy. Um, and, um, and I also needed to work with Swing GUIs at the same time. And I'd heard so much about IntelliJ, I decided to try it out. So I downloaded IntelliJ IDEA. And in those days, there was no free version. So you had to you know, try it out for 30 days. And then I, after the 30 days were up, I actually paid the money to buy my very first, actually, and last license. Um, <clears throat> after, you know, when the next version came out, I begged them for a new license. Please give me another license. And they, they kept on giving it. Um, <clears throat> But um, I used it for 30, day, 30 days, and I bought it. And I always say that I actually paid twice for IntelliJ. The first time I paid for the license, and the second time um, I was being paid per hour, and it made me faster. So I was actually getting paid less for the same amount of end code <laughs> before, before I used Eclipse. So <laughs> I mean, maybe I should go back to VI or Emacs, and then I can actually earn more money <laughs> for the same amount of work. But anyway, I, I had a more pleasant life, less frustration, and it's really great. I, I'm, I'm not paid by IntelliJ. I'm, I'm, not, uh, uh, I, I'm not sponsored or anything like that. So this is just my own use, my own, um, uh, my own view. So the one thing that I realized recently is that they've added something called a toolbox, which is incredibly useful because what it does is um, you should download this. If you haven't downloaded this, download it. Uh, what it does is it, it keeps all the JetBrain products up to date. This is always a pain in the... We had to download the latest version and install it, whereas now it does it all for you. What's also nice is sometimes when the new versions come out, they have bugs and they don't work properly. So with this, you can keep lots of versions installed at the same time. And you can roll back to the previous version. It's happened to me in the past where I would do a talk and I'd open up IntelliJ and then it just wouldn't work. Whereas now I can just go, OK, take the previous version and it's really very convenient. So if you don't have this, get this. And then the other thing is that we've, like the default scheme that people use mostly is the Darkular scheme. That's the most popular still. But the way that they do the, the highlighting of errors doesn't make them stand out as clearly as if you've got the white background and you've got sort of a very bright red on the white background. They have sort of a, a reddish, but not very clear that it's an error. So I always try and, try and update that and make it a bit more obvious that there's an error. The other thing that, that um, I noticed, and we spoke about this with, um, early on, is that the key map for Mac OS X used to be very similar to the Windows key map. It used to be almost exactly the same. So you could easily go between Windows and, and Mac and Linux and Mac and without too many difficulties. Because what happens is we sort of get to memorize these, these key maps. And, um, and, it, and it's really hard if you use a colleague's computer and they use a different operating system. But there's IntelliJ IDEA Classic, which is pretty much very, very similar to Windows. Um, and it actually has more finger-friendly shortcuts than, this, than, the, than, the, than the official Mac OS X uh, key map. What I did is I took them the IDEA Classic 
and I adapted it a bit. I added a few more shortcuts for myself to make it easier to use. I'll talk about some of them now. Other thing which I find quite useful is if you have, if you are, um, if you want to select words, if you just double click on them, um, by default it, it selects a whole word. Um, if you use, use camel humps, um, you know, case mixed mixed words. If you say select use camel hump words, it only selects the part that you're clicking on, double clicking on. So this is a, a nice, uh, I always put that on. The other thing which, which I put on by default, and I'll show you this in a moment, is by default, they don't have this on. They don't have open files with single click on, and they don't have always select open file. And in my opinion, this should be on by default. Um, so let me show you what I mean. So here, for example, first of all, the camel hump, I've turned it on already. So if I double click, it's only selecting the part I'm, I'm on. Um, by default, it'll be the whole word. Right? It's easy enough to select the whole word. You double click and you drag it over, and then it, it, it selects the words. But what I mean is this. If I, for example, click on Elegant Frame, it doesn't open Elegant Frame. Ele GUI tools, it doesn't open GUI tools. I've got to do double click. And who's got time for double clicks, right? I mean, come on, this is 2023. So. Um, <clears throat> And similarly, if I go to Data Input Frame and I click on that, it doesn't select it on the left-hand side in the project. So what I always do is I turn it on. So I have Open Files with single click, and always select Open File. Now, this might have made sense in the year 2000 when machines were a lot slower to not open it immediately, but nowadays I don't think there's any reason except to keep it the same as it always has been. So now I can sort of move around, and it, as soon as I stop somewhere, it opens the file. So this is a lot more convenient. And I don't make that mistake of clicking on something and then not seeing the same file in the project view on the left-hand side. So this, is a, I think, is, a, is an improvement over the default setting. All right, the idea, of, the philosophy of idea is, at IntelliJ is to be used mostly without a mouse. The one thing you can't do without a mouse is what I've just done, right? But that's almost the only thing you, you, you can't do without a mouse is you can't go to the gear and select the, the scrolling. But besides that, like the general use, you can do almost everything without the mouse. And the idea is that you, you'd want to prevent using, moving your, your hands off the keyboard because then you're going to have trouble finding the right place again. That's the theory, okay? That's the, as far as I know, the philosophy. Um, and so they've got hotkeys for almost everything. And they've got a very nice shortcut PDF and I recommend that you try and memorize one new shortcut a day. Some of these shortcuts overlap. So for example, you don't need to learn find action because you can just do find anything and you'll find the action as well. But there are lots of shortcuts. It'll take you about six months to go through all of them, but it'll make you a lot more effective and quick when working with IntelliJ and a lot more comfortable as well. Um, and you can track your progress with that um, if you go to help and my productivity, it will show you how you're doing. So for example, here um, I've used the syntax aware selection like 167,000 times. Uh, is that possible? Yeah, it is possible. It's, <laughs> it's lots and lots of times um, from uh, 2014 until when I made this slide, which I think was 2021. So, you know, in like 17 years or seven years, I use it a lot. Um, I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. But what's useful about that my productivity is not what you have done, but what you haven't done. So if you click on that and you say, what have I not used, you might discover things that can be useful, which you could be using. All right, um, a very useful thing is if you want to look for things, search everywhere, just shift, shift, will do that. And um, if you do four times shift, it also includes non-project items. So it's, for example, by default, it's only gonna show your own classes. With four shifts, you're going to see also, for example, classes inside the JDK or other libraries. And uh, I don't even know about this. I don't know when they added that. might have always been there. But uh, <laughs> I kept on hitting this by mistake when I did the up arrow on my older MacBook Pro. And uh, it, this window kept on popping up. and never looked. It was like a close a stupid thing. Until eventually somebody pointed out, actually, this is quite useful. You know? <laughs> Get to know this thing. So nowadays, whenever I look for something, shift, shift, and there's the dialogue for searching. All right, I have to mention what happens when IntelliJ doesn't work, right? So, 
because I, I told him I'm not sponsored by IntelliJ, so I can talk about the bad things as well. And uh, this was a while ago, all right? Um, I was doing some coding, threading, and I started a bunch of threads, and, and my machine crashed. Um, in fact, I had to like hold down the, the power button for it to shut down because it wouldn't respond to anything anymore. And, and when I restarted, and I tried to run a program, you can see by the looks of this Mac OS X that it's quite old, um, the following happened. I said start, and it said, okay, I'm, I'm pausing, compiling, loading files. And then it said, um, let's start, and then it goes, okay, let's start that again. So it kept on going round and round, trying to compile, not actually making any progress. Um, and, you know, I decided I'm going to stop, so I, I clicked on stop, and it said, sorry, you can't stop it because the compiler's busy running. So, you know, and then, but the second time when I did it, it actually managed to allow me to stop it. So I thought, let me, let me screencast that, make a recording of that for you. Um, and, uh, but what happened is that because I shut it down in, in, a, like in an unorderly fashion, there were some corrupted files, which can happen, right? So the way to fix that, it's actually built into the IDE. Um, it says you go to File and Repair IDE, and you put a basic step through until everything works. You don't have to go all the way. Normally, I don't, um, I don't want to lose the local history. The local history is really useful. Um, so try not, to, try not to lose that, but I, um, I typically will invalidate the caches as well, which will take a bit of time to re-index, but then at least you, you solve most of the problems. I've discovered another problem recently because I've got projects going back to 2000 and, I don't know, a long time ago, um, in that if I open old projects with a new version of IntelliJ, I get an infinite loop and it doesn't respond at all. I have to actually kill minus nine on, the, on IntelliJ. Others have also seen this. Um, and the, the way that I get around it is to create a new project with existing sources that overwrite the old project files, and then it works. So if you see that, just make a new project with existing files. Um, don't use the old project files, and then it should be working again, just in case it happens to you. All right. Now, there's a super key that fixes almost anything uh, or the, inside your code, right? And that's Alt-Enter. That's like, that's like the go-to key for everything. That's like the, the AI of the past, right? Um, and it shows you intention actions and quick fixes. And what, what I like about it is it, it normally shows you a, a good option. There are other IDEs which show you like the worst option first, whereas this one actually shows you, usually, not always, but usually shows you the best option first. Uh, so Alt-Enter, and then you can just you know, go and use it. Um, another one which is very similar is, is Alt-Insert on Windows, or um, I've mapped it to Control-N. So the one is Alt-Enter, and the other one is Control-Enter. So Alt-Enter and Control-Enter, or Control-N. Um, so let, let's just make a little class just to show you how that works. Um, so over here is a, uh, let's make a playground over here. So make a person class, um, and we're going to put in here private final string first name, and we're going to do a last name as well, and an age, and age, can never change age, it's a final age. Um, now, if I press Control Enter, it gives me a bunch of code that it can generate. Of course, <laughs> you don't need any of this because you can just take a record, right? But <laughs> if you didn't have records, you can now have um, constructors or getters or two string and so on. So I can make a constructor that lets me select all the fields and I've got the constructor. That's one path to do it, Control Enter. And that, but then you can have the, the, the getters, the two string method, and all of that added as well. So your getters can be here, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the other way is with Alt-Enter. Alt-Enter then fixes anything. So it's like your go-to for fixing anything that might be wrong. It's a bit like Control-1 on Eclipse. And here I'm just saying add constructor parameters. I'm selecting them, Enter, and now we are good to go. All right? So um, there are two ways of getting to the same place. I don't think I'm finished yet, right? There, so two ways to get to the same thing, right? Um, and obviously you'll, you'll change between the two. Oh, by the way, I've got this little gift for those who are here, um, Data Structures course in Java. It expires at 20 past three, 
but I might extend it a bit because I don't, you know, if your network doesn't work. But grab that tinyurl.com slash jprime23, or that link takes you there as well. Um, and you have, to get the, you have to get it before then. Once you've got it, you've got it for life, so it doesn't expire. The course doesn't expire, just the coupon expires at, uh, in an hour from now. All right, so tinyurl.com slash jprime23 gets you that. All right, so um, the other thing which is really, really useful is you can generate code with live templates. So if you just type psvm or main tab, um, it generates your main method for you. You've got sout, sout v, which I use a lot, uh, sout m for the method name, sout p for the, the parameter, show what all the parameters are. And then you've got different forms of iteration depending on what you want to trade over. So um, I'm going to show you a little demo of that quickly. Uh, so here we've got your, oh, let's go to, let's make a live template demo. So I want to add a, method, a main method, public static void main, uh, or main tab, and they've got your method, method there. You want to iterate over the, over the strings, so you go iter tab, you've got your iteration going. Um, you've got a list of string, list equals string dot of, uh, not string of, list of, of J prime, all the best conferences. Uh, is, there any, is there anything else? I don't think there's anything else. We'll keep it at that. Uh, list of, and you can iterate over that as well with just iter. Or you can do it AR for iterating over an array over um, an array with indexes, or it's CO. So all of these shortcuts for iterating over things. So it's really very convenient for generating sort of the, the code we need to do over and over again. Um, and then if you're inside a method, let's do public void foo, which has string bar inside here. If I do sout m, it shows you the name of the class and the method name. And sout p, Oops. Sout p does the parameters. In this case, there's only one, so it just shows you the one parameter. And um, I think if you do it over here, okay, it doesn't automatically do it. It sometimes does it. Sometimes it'll, it'll convert it to actually an array over there, to do arrays dot, dot two string. Um, and then, of course, sout v will do a value, so printing out a value. The sout p is actually the same as sout p in this case, but it doesn't have to be. All right. So these are all the little um, little tricks. Um, and you can write your own. And, and, and the writing your own is actually where it gets really interesting. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, the other thing is navigating. Um, the way that I, I work normally, I know you're not supposed to use the, 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 the mouse, but I like the mouse. <laughs> you're not going to pry the mouse from my hands. <laughs> so I really like my mouse. Um, I mean, I don't like mice. My son sent me a picture this, this morning of our, of our electricity board outside, and it's got rats inside at the moment. There's one rat who has decided to check out of life, but he's inside there at the moment. Uh, we need to get rid of him. Um, but I do like the, the computer mouse, the computer mouse, not, not other mice. Um, but so what I do is I sort of um, hold, the, hold the command button down and then just click. On the, on the button. So when you hit, hold command down, everything becomes a hyperlink, each, each item in there. So this is very, very useful to, to navigate. Um, you can also do command B, which also goes to the, to the right place, so control B with, with Windows. Um, and then I can navigate back, so backwards and forth, forwards with control, alt, left, and right. So I'll sort of click onto something. So command, there's string, let's click on that. Command serialize, we'll click on that. Um, and so you can sort of click around as you want, and then once you're done, you just go back a bit. It's a bit like a, a, bit like a web page. We're trying to figure out what's going on. So that, that's, that, that I find very useful. And as I said, um, I like my mouse. Um, I don't want to throw it away. And of course, it is useful to be able to touch type. And what I normally do is I've got my left hand on the keyboard and my right hand on the mouse. And it's easy enough to find the right keys because you've got these little dimples on little in, uh, things you can feel on the F and the J. So you can find your way around without looking. It's not that difficult if you practice it a bit. So here's my hand. Now it's in the right place. It's the wrong place, right place. I mean, you, you can find it once you've sort of practiced it a bit. 
Um, so I, I don't find using a mouse so problematic. I find it's actually quite comfortable to do that. And I find scrolling with a mouse more smooth than trying to use a keyboard. So that's why I'm saying that even though the philosophy is throw away the mouse, that's not my philosophy. I don't think it's necessary. I think the mouse is quite cool. All right, other thing which is quite useful are bookmarks. Right? You can actually set bookmarks across your project. So quite often you're working on something, and it's not very well factored code, so you've got, um, or rather it's tightly coupled, you've got five different places you need to work on at the same time. So you go to each one, and you set a bookmark. You say control, shift, a number, zero through nine. And then you can find these numbers very quickly again by simply saying control and that number. So this is incredibly useful. And um, I've got a few coding demos I wanted to show you. And I was going to set up uh, these bookmarks beforehand, but I forgot. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't show you. <laughs> but I, I might demonstrate them later on. The other thing that we have, which I use a lot, is my most used one, is the syntax-aware selection. Um, this is control W, and the official one is, is option up arrow. Now, option up arrow doesn't work for me because it's, it's got two different, I need two hands for that. I can't, like, hold that and my hand's big, but not that big. I mean, it's like a giant's hand to have, to have the, or, or use my right hand, which I also don't want to do. So I want my left hand on the keyboard and the right hand on the mouse, and extending selection won't work with the standard setting. So I changed it back to the official one, which is Command W, which works well, except when I use other applications, Command W closes the application if you're on Mac. So that's kind of a pain, in, a pain as well. But uh, yeah, so that's what I do. And so expand selection and, se and string selection are incredibly useful. So for example, um, here I want to select this code. Command W selects the word I'm on. Command W again selects the whole word. W, the string, the string. And as I click it, it expands the selection more and more. And then if I want to make it less, I just do the opposite. Command Shift W, and I'm shrinking the selection down again. So this is really very, very useful. And as you saw, I use it a lot. And that also shows why I've got such a high number, because unfortunately, you do need to press it quite often to get the effect you want. You can also do something like this, double click on the curly brace, and it selects the, that code block. Right? So um, obviously, I mean, I use this a lot, and um, it's, it's incredibly useful. Um, also, if you need to move code around, up and down, control shift up and down, or command shift up and down will move it around. And IntelliJ is quite good with that. It basically tries to make sure that the code still stays legal. So you can't, for example, take try, just the line try, and move it around. I mean, it's, 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 it's got to be something which will still be legal afterwards. So it's, it's quite good with that. Um, all right. Now, I mentioned live templates and that you can write your own live templates as well. And uh, this is incredibly useful. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but also, you can, like, you have standard live templates which you can, you can fire up with Control Alt J, Command Alt J. Um, and again, it's syntax away. So if you're in Java, it's going to give you options of callable, read locks, write locks. Um, and for example, what I did is I changed main string array to main string dot dot dot. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, uh, I've got my reasons why that's more useful. But here's an example. So what I did was um, I often do coding demos. And there's one thing people keep on asking is, what is faster? Is linked list faster or an array list faster? Now, of course, to do it properly, you need a proper JMH. Uh, test and you know, but in many examples, you can just show a demo which will take you like two minutes and it ends the argument. Because if, if it's a difference between, for example, uh, I don't know, um, one second and one minute, you don't need to do JMH, right? It is so obvious that, it's, that the other one is slower, there's not much you need to do. Um, so for doing just a quick demo, I, wanted some, I want something like this, where I basically um, specify text like this, long dollar time, dollar equals system nano time. I then put in a, the selection, dollar selection, dollar inside. And finally, I work out the end time and I print out what the time is. So if I, for example, um, if I'm inside here and I want to see how long it does it take to do this loop, I can just do Control alt j press the N, and I've got my timing around there. So it, it really saves time doing that. Um, obviously, it's, it's context-aware, so you need to make sure you, you specify it for a Java snippet of code. 
Um, but, um, and you can do this, you can actually write fairly complex scripts for this. Um, I think it's using Groovy or something like that for the code. Um, if you want to know how to do it, just look at, at, other, at other shortcuts. Any web with like SART P, for example, show how to extract parameters, and then you can, you can do it quite nicely with it. But this is really useful to be able to, um, to, to produce code very quickly um, in almost no time, especially doing demos and things like that. Ah, something else which people tend to like uh, <laughs> is column selection. Uh, quite often you've got this, you've got all these, um, these fields, for example, and you want to edit them in some way. And with column selection, you can very easily select just a column of information. Um, and there are two ways of doing that. The one way is with the mouse. You simply hold, hold the Alt button down, and you drag the mouse, and you're ending up with column selection. Um, but in that case, you don't stay in the column selection mode. You, you do column selection, then you're done with that. Um, the other way to do it is to, is to turn on column selection mode with a keyboard. And um, on Windows, that's Alt, Shift, Insert. Or on Linux, on Mac, the official one is uh, Command, Shift, 8, I think. I, I've, I use Command, Control, Shift, C for my version. Um, but then it stays in the, in the column selection mode. Let me show you how that works. So here's my, here my, where's my person class? Here I've got the fields. I don't want to make them private. I want to make them public for whatever reason. Okay? I can hold the Alt down. I can select that. And now I've selected the columns and public. Right? Just hold the Alt down. Once I go out of there, it's just normal again. If there's no, there's not, nothing's changed. This, the mode is just a normal selection again. Every time I hold Alt down and I select, it becomes a column selection like that. Private. Okay. All right. The other thing is, um, if I if I turn on the column selection, you'll notice it down in the bottom down here. It says column right at the bottom, and right over there. And now it's permanently in column selection mode. So if I now move the keyboard, the, then it stays there, but it stays in that mode. Um, so it is a little bit weird. Like if I go to the front, it's all nicely lined up. If we go to the end, then it's after the last element, which is, it used to be different, but it is like that now. And um, uh, should be private, right? So let's make it private. So you can imagine if you've got a lot of um, code that looks very similar, that you can actually get quite productive with this column selection. Um, all right, so just make sure that if you turn on column selection, once you're done, turn it off again, otherwise you're going to get really confused with, <laughs> with your selections. So I've got a little class here called fruit spec. The fruit spec has a bunch of strings. I want to add an enum um, in there, and I'm going to show you how I do that using this column selection and the other things I've shown you up to now. So let's go to fruit spec, shift, shift, fruit spec, and there we are. So find it very quickly. Here are my strings. I want to make an enum, so I'm going to make a private enum, um, what would I call it, field. Okay, nice and easy. And these are going to be my enum values. So how do I get this into my enum values? Okay, so I'm going to copy this in here. Let's select them, unindent them, shift, shift tab to unindent them. I'm going to do search and replace. And I'm going to replace comma space with comma space and the new line. Okay? And replace all. Okay? So now I've made them all on separate lines. Of course, in VI, I can do that as well very easily, but this is not VI. All right. So now the next thing I'm going to do, now I've, I can't remember the exact sequence, but we'll, we'll figure it out, is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to turn on column selection, so that's on. I'm going to um, put this in a bracket, all right, the brackets. Go to the front again, paste that. Oh, that should have been column selection. That should have actually worked. Let me just do that again. Um, so it's got to do a couple of things here. 
There you go. So I'm going to select this. Go down. Select them all. Copy. Go to the beginning. Paste. And um, just need to do a few things. I want to go back to the beginning, and I want to make them uppercased. I'll do that again. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> the problem is when I'm, if you're doing a, a talk, sometimes you forget what the, what the shortcuts are supposed to be. There we go. So it's command shift uppercase. So I've made them all uppercase over here. And there we go. So I've made all the, all the settings here. This last one is, is wrong. Uh, need a semicolon there. All right, so a bit, a bit backwards and forwards and a bit clumsy today. Uh, not as clumsy as yesterday, but uh, I'm <laughs> still a bit clumsy. I'm going to make a constructor. Oh, that should, should be a constructor here, create constructor, which takes the, the name and make a field for the name, and we're done. So I've sort of done donkey work, of which would have otherwise been like really tedious and painful just by using column selection and, and creating all of this for me. All right? So just search and replace. Oh, I've got some tips for speakers. I added this because um, some of you might want to share with colleagues and so on. And IntelliJ is really great at, at doing presentations. They even have something called a presentation mode. And um, presentation mode basically only shows the code. So it really focuses on the code. It's like a distraction-free code. Uh, what I did was I rewired, I re reassigned the command option P, like the normal version, normally it looks like this. So normally it looked like this. Okay? So what I did was I did command alt P so that it, it turns it into presentation mode. And that's what it looks like. So now it's only the code. So there we go. Um, Alt-1 will show you the, um, the project view, but other than that, it's, it's going to be gone. The project view is gone. And all you see is the code. So this is very nice if you're doing a presentation um, to reassign the, the, present, the command Alt-P, which is actually for extracting parameters, but I, I prefer to have it as for the presentation mode. Um, so, and, and also what you can do if you look at your settings, at the bottom, presentation mode, you can say how much you want to zoom by. Um, so again, I've often seen speakers, they show the code, and then they've got to zoom in every time. But here, you simply say zoom is going to be whatever, 120%, um, 150%, whatever you need. My, my fonts, I, I make my fonts big anyway, so you can see them easily. I always want my fonts big enough so you can read it on a smartphone. Um, when I'm doing a presentation. But here's sort of also set the custom font size to 24 for the whole program. So this makes it also a bit easier to work with. Um, all right, so I'll keep this one on. And uh, Command Alt P on my machine are set up for this presentation mode. Um, and then also what you want to do is to have different color schemes for resolutions and for different circumstances. Um, normally I use Darkula for my talks, but I've got different versions of the Darkula for 1080p resolution, 720p resolution, so it always is big enough so you can read it on a smartphone. Um, but it depends where you're talking. In this room, uh, Darkula is perfect. You've got great screens, easy to read. But if you go to the other room, you want to have a white background. You don't want to have a black background. Um, and so it's very easy to switch, just control a, a back quote. We'll, we'll do it for you. you simply go, Theme, high contrast, or theme, uh, that wasn't the best example, uh, theme, IntelliJ Lite, and you can very easily switch between them like that. Uh, also, editor code style will we'll do it as well. Um, now I've completely destroyed everything. Oh, yeah, there's some bugs. Um, if you stay inside the presentation view, sometimes you have to go out and back in again for it to reapply itself to the latest versions. Um, all right, so control tilde will allow you to change the, that very easy and very quickly. All right, let's carry on with the productivity. Basic code completion, control space, does a lot of things, but it doesn't do them well. All right, so for example, here I'm saying list of string names equals new, and it shows me all the possible options. It shows linked list, it shows me array list, it shows me vector, it shows me demo, it shows me string. <laughs> I'm going like, 
<laughs> why is it showing me string? String is not a list. Like, why waste my time with, with a string? But if you do control shift space, which I actually almost always use, it, it shows me, it only shows me the, the classes which are in fact lists within my project. It doesn't show me the other ones. Now, by default, if you don't do anything, if you just start typing, it uses this one. So it does the basic code completion. But if you press control shift space, it filters them for you, and it only shows you what you actually can use within that context. So that's something that you really want to, want to be we're using instead. All right. Another part which is incredibly amazing is the refactoring. Um, and uh, this was the reason I used IntelliJ in the beginning, because it allowed me to change really bad code to be not so bad code. Um, and you've got, for example, you know, moving F6 will, will do that. Moving, um, uh, rename a shift F6, change signature. And change signature applies to, to methods, whereas move, eh, I'm not sure where move applies. Rename applies in most places, but change signature applies to methods, not for other things. And you can also extract a method. So you can extract a method, select a method, or select the part you want to extract, press Control alt m and now you're extracting as a method. But there are some, rest some restrictions. For example, you, and I think this is a mistake, to be honest, um, you can't have more than one return value. I mean, how hard is it to simply create a record and have multiple return values. It's not that difficult. But that's just the restriction they've got. Also, the block must represent a proper uh, statement or expression. You can't have only the try and not the catch. You must be try and the catch, not just one part of it. Um, but one of the benefits is that if you extract a method, it also shows you other code that's similar. And it says, hey, do you want to extract this as well and make like one method out of it? Um, it doesn't do it particularly well, though. Unfortunately, so you got to help a bit, a bit, help it a bit. Like you have to help it across the road. Say, so let me help you a bit. It doesn't work out of the box too well. So let's try it out. Here's an example in the PCD generator. Generator, and this is code that um, was from an actual project. But here's the code. Now I want to, I want to extract that into a method. You can see it's three times exactly the same, almost exactly the same, just a bit different column from a database. All right, so it's, but besides that, it's exactly the same code. So I'll select the first bit, extract method. OK, that's uh, get remark. Fine. Then I do the second one. And I say, extract method, get remark, two. And now it says, hey, wait a moment. Um, huh. We could use that also in the second, in the third extract uh, com extract uh, commenters or what is it? extract remark as well, and I say okay, just just do it. Fine, just do, I don't care, just do it. Accept and replace, and now everything breaks. Right, code's broken. It says sorry. Um, I mean, it doesn't compile anymore. Go get remark two. It's, it's now got this remark twice in there. Um, the remark is not even really used. Return. It's 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 just broken. Um, so you need to help a bit. And, and what I find is, if you help a little bit to make it look more similar, then it has no problem with extracting it. It does a really great job of doing that. So for example, if I put this inside a code block, and this as well. So I just put a code block around there, and uh, put a code block around there as well. Of course, I need to define these separately, Okay, like that. And if I now s select the first one, and I say extract remark, then it says, don't you want to use it for everything? And I say, sure, go for it. Oh, and there we go. It's done them all correctly. So they've got once. Um, once okay, the only thing I don't like is the name of this, but I'm going to willing to, to, to overlook that. Let's rename that to um, column name. All right. And besides that, I'm happy with it. So it's managed. Then I can get rid of these. These are like training wheels on a bicycle. Now everything's good again. All right? So sometimes you have to help a bit. And this gets a bit tricky because you don't know how you're supposed to help. And that takes a bit of sort of practice and figuring out how, how, to, how to do that. Um, 
there's another way you could do it as well. I think, which without the code blocks, um, this is one way of doing it. And I think if you define, uh, yeah, I think if you, if you just made these different names, like you said, string remark uh, two, okay? And I don't know if you saw this, it's actually quite clever. Um, you can see that from then onwards, it renames remark to remark two, but it doesn't go to the code above it, All right? So that, that's quite clever. Then if I do this, this one as well, a string remark, I rename that to remark three, it only does the one below, not above. So that, that's, that's always been like this, and it's quite clever. And if I do that, if I've got three different remarks, then again, I should be able to extract that, extract remark, and it should work. It should do it correctly. So if you look at that, perfect. Again, perfect, except for the name, but that's, that's fine as well. Now, I showed you rename as F6, but I can also just do this. I can say um, uh, column name, and you see the remark one is now bright red. I made it more bright than it usually is. But I press Alt-Enter, and it simply fixes it to be renamed as well. So you either do F sh uh, Shift F6, or you just press Alt-Enter, and it does it for you. It doesn't always work, but usually it does. OK, inline encode is opposite of extracting. So um, Control alt n just inlines it for you. It's very convenient, close to extract method. Um, all right, the other thing which is very useful is the analyzer. So you can ins inspect your code. And you can go through entire code and say, show me all the things that I could improve. Show me where I could use Java 17 code. Uh, you know, and just it goes dig, 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 and then poof, there you go. All of this you could improve. Um, and it, it checks for the most glaring code and consistencies that you might find. So for example, you might find enhanced switch. Um, you could use enhanced switched or pattern variables. There are lots of different places that you could use. Uh, we could use this. Let me show you quickly how, how you turn this on. So, I've got it at the moment um, turned set up for migration. So if I do analyze, inspect code, I've got Java 17 migrate. You have to use the JDK 17, otherwise it won't use that. Or the language level has to be Java 17, otherwise it won't, won't show you anything. But if you run it, it runs through the code, and after a very short time, it shows you where you could improve things. So um, the enhanced switch, for example. And now, you can do one of two things. You can either be like really lazy and just say, just do them all. Migrate, enhance, switch, and you're done. Okay? I, I don't recommend that in general because sometimes they make mistakes. Right? It's refactoring code, and you don't want to just refactor code without actually checking what you're doing. You, you do need to check it. It's your responsibility. You can't just wholesale replace all local variables with var. Don't do that, please. Um, so rather do it more, more deliberately. Like here, for example, they've got, um, this is what they produced. Now, I'm sort of happy with it, but not entirely, because I actually would prefer it to be a bit different. I prefer to do this, to do, um, I want to have the equal switch printer, and then I want to return this to column selection on, get rid of this. But that's not going to compile because printer is an int, so I need to have a, default case, which returns the CFG data 3, 2, whatever it was before. Okay, so I want to use the um, uh, switch statement rather than just the um, switch, exp switch expression. Is that right? No, I don't know if it's right. Anyway, um, so you can see that, that um, you've got the migration. And it's, what's also nice is that they actually show it to you in line, um, but you need to turn it on. So you need to, inside your editor, say that inspections, you need to se select what profile you want to use. And if you turn that on, then whilst you're editing, it's going to show you where you could improve things. So for example, if you look at um, here, you can see there's, uh, there's an instance of table sorter. And it says, you know, you could use pattern variables there. And I can. So I just press Alt-Enter, and I change it to pattern variable. Done. So it sort of highlights. And I find this more useful, because um, you don't want to just whole scale change everything. But rather, you're working on a piece of code, let's improve it whilst you're working on it. You know, keep it, make it better than it was before. All right. So, oh, I'll show you one more, which is the 
try with resource on the receive file. So let's go to that one. It'll be down here somewhere, Java 7, I think. Uh, try with resource is interesting because that's actually the one where they had, I think they've improved, but traditionally they had the most problems with this one, getting it right. Uh, so basically this is a try, and then at the end we say write it or close. Right? And if there's an exception, we just say print stack trace. I, I didn't write this code. This is a code that somebody gave me. Um, I wouldn't do that. Um, but here we say alt enter and replay with, replace with try with resources. And it looks OK. I think this one it got right. Yeah. It's not exactly the same as it was before, but I think it's better than it was before. So. Um, I'm happy with it, but as I said, this, this one in particular, I've had issues with where it, it generated code that wouldn't even compile at the end. But I think they have improved that a bit. All right, um, so conclusion. If you're not on my newsletter, you really owe it to solve to subscribe. It's javaspecialists.eu um, slash archive sub, sub, slash subscribe. I've got readers even in Bulgaria, if you can imagine that. <laughs> I've got about 1,000 in Bulgaria. Um, but um, yeah, I've been doing this for over 22 years, since the year 2000. And I do it, I try to every month. Um, I don't know if I'll do it this month, because I've got to do it either today or tomorrow, and I actually want to have fun with you guys. So I'm not sure if I'll do it this month, but I'll do it like on Friday or something. But you'll see lots of other things, courses, additional training, and so on. Make sure to get this if you haven't yet. And it's set to expire in like half an hour, so make sure you get it before then. Once you've got it, you've got it for life. So um, there are lots of other keystrokes to learn, lots of other features to learn. Um, um, and yeah, just learn one new one per day, and you'll get through it in six months. Any questions? See a hand over there? No, we need to need a microphone for that. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> we uh, anyways, are not ready uh, yet. Uh, Stay where you are. I have a, a function with three parameters. I autocomplete the function, but it doesn't put the parameters automatically. Is there a way to automatically put, smartly at least, uh, the parameters which are in the context? Yeah, into sure. The Absolutely. So you can do that very easily. Um, I've never done it, but it should be a piece of cake. Um, you simply go and you, you create a new live template. All right? So live templates are here under Java. And um, so what you're looking for is you're looking for SOUT P and SOUT M. So um, let's go for SOUT P first. So SOUT P will give you the parameters. All right? In fact, there you go, dollar format will do it for you. Um, and, then you and then you simply combine that with this one over here. So uh, let's, let's make a copy of this. Uh, copy. You can probably duplicate it here. I'll just make a, there you go, so it's start P1. Let's do this um, blah. I'll call it blah just to make it more distinct. And then what we do is we, we go to the uh, we, we go to the SART M and we take that information and add it to 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 the SART P. So it's going to be this. Uh, and I, I might have to I think I also have to edit the variables as well to copy the code from that because the, the actual code for getting extracting the parameters is going to be inside there. So let's go back to blah. I need to add that in there. Although I think this is going to work. I think this will work. Um, this will be this plus that. I think that's going to work. I, I don't know, but we'll see. Oh, I also have to set up the, the applicable context. We're going to say it's going to be just Java. It should be a bit more specific, but let's see if that works. So now, um, if I do blah, eh, didn't do it. I, 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 I think I have to edit the, the, the actual code as well. 
sorry, what's that? Yeah, you have to set up variables as well. So the variables are set up inside the edit variables. So you'd have to go and, oh, OK, so I probably have to do it for both of them. So um, the salt m would be over here, edit variables. These are there ready. That, that, one's, that one's easy. But salt p, edit variables. OK, this is the one that I have to copy and paste over. So That's easy. copy and go back to blah, edit variables. Oh, it is there. One why it doesn't work. Anyway, I'm not sure, but this is, ba this is sort of how you'll do it. Um, just look at what is, uh, look at something which is most similar to what you want to do, and you just uh, base it on that. All right, thanks. More questions? There's a question. OK, one question uh, on your um, extract method example. Um, I'm not sure of this. You sort of develop an intuition while you work with it. But I had an intuition that if you just selected the if statement, it would have produced uh, something more closely to what you wanted. Oh, uh, possibly. Quite possibly. Uh, maybe. Um, that was in the? I think this one here. Yeah, this one here. So let's inline this again. OK. Back to where we had it. Um, remark. Oh, don't want to do that. That's the view from Office, by the way. Uh, so this, we'll just change this to be remark. Remark. And. So that's what we started with. You think if I do this extract method, um, so th that should work. It should work, but then I still haven't got this part um, well, in every one of the methods, it, and I really wanted to have the whole lot. Yeah. So, so you're correct, but it's but it's if I wanted the whole thing, you need to sort of massage it so that it fits properly. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. More questions? Well, Oh, we're actually question? out of time. We're out of time. The next uh, one is starting yes, soon. Yes, so, so you can have a catch uh, Heinz uh, outside. I just have one question. Who is still using NetBeans? Anybody? Ooh, okay. That's a nasty question. I actually did a survey yeah. like uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. Uh -huh. And I, I put on the NetBeans, IntelliJ, IDEA, and Visual, Studio, Visual Code Studio. And uh, NetBeans was like 11%. Who are those people? And Eclipse was also about 11%. And then IntelliJ was like 79%. And the rest was like 1% was Visual Studio Code. Mm. But it was kind of a little bit twisted, uh, the, the, the thing, because, um, I, uh, because only the NetBeans crowd re retweeted my, my poll. <laughs> OK. So the conclusion I have from that is that the people that use NetBeans really like it a lot. And they're very passionate. And it's, it's a great tool. Yes. NetBeans is a very, very important part of the Java world because um, it's not only an ID, it's also a whole framework that you can use for other stuff as well. Yeah. Anybody coding on Eclipse? Well, those people can leave the conference. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's a joke. Thank you so much, Heinz. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>